now I'm going to introduce Jeanette Sargon, who's going to introduce the next round of speakers for the Pecha Kucha session. And first up is um, native Denver resident, Christy, Chrissy, sorry Chrissy, Fanganello. Um, and like a lot of the nation's best transportation leaders who aren't just practitioners, she's also a customer. She drives her streets, bikes her streets, walks her streets, and knows firsthand about the transportation portfolio of her city. Denver represents the direction of a lot of American cities. It's changing and it's growing fast, but it's looking to preserve what makes it a great place to begin with. Chrissy is a native daughter of Denver and of transportation, and she brings her street smarts from a life lived at street level with her family and two dogs in Denver. And she is the city's first director of transportation and mobility. Please join me in welcoming Chrissy. Let's see, someone said there was a clicker. Is that the clicker? All right. Well, I'm really happy to be here today um, in front of everybody and talk to you a little bit about Denver and what we've been doing. What we've been going on in Denver, we have to go back a little bit in order to go forward. And the picture here in front of you, this is not from a really long time ago. This is 1986. This is also 1986. These are the viaducts that came into and outside of Denver. There were at least 10 of them that came in, bringing goods and services, but not necessarily a lot of people. In 1986, our streets were empty. This is Lodo. If you've been to Lower Downtown lately, it does not look like this. Our infrastructure was crumbling and falling apart. In 1983, we had just opened the 16th Street Mall. Uh, up in that top left-hand corner, that's what it looked like in 1983. I was lucky enough to be working in uh, the summer of 1986 selling Dove Bars from a cart. It was a lot of fun. There were not a lot of people, and we had probably more fun trading things back and forth between the other cart sellers along the way. Um, but it was a starting point in terms of what we're looking at. It's one of the most successful transit malls that we've had that is, exists in the entire country. But there's so much more for us to do in terms of what we're trying to get accomplished, looking at the materials of this of the 16th Street Mall and how to make it continue to be more and more people friendly um, and moving us beyond our past of the viaducts that were really just all about um, moving trucks and vehicles that had nothing to do with moving people. And that's what the transportation system needs to do, is think about how does this impact, how does this affect human beings? For the first time in transportation in the city of Denver's perspective, we have um, just now in the National Citizen Survey, transportation has been decided, determined by folks that are taking that survey, that is an issue of quality of life. For everyone in this room, that's a complete no-brainer. Obviously, it's a qual issue of quality of life. Um, Without good transportation, how does it contribute to the sense of place that, is, um, that our cities really are? If we are only talking about moving cars or vehicles, we're not thinking about what are the, what's the work that we're doing from a transportation perspective that can actually contribute and make our communities better. This is the work of NACTO, and this is the work of everybody in this room. I think my 20 seconds is not working. Oh, that's backwards though. Green. Okay, this is behind Denver Union Station. Again, this is in the mid 1980s. This is not like way back in 1909 or any really time far along ago. There were a few trains coming in and out of Denver at this point in time, but there were not a lot of trains happening. It was mostly the ski train that was coming through and an occasional Amtrak. I was lucky enough to be one of the folks that went on the ski train. Boy, this thing really has a mind of its own. Um, I see why you hated this, Salita. <laughs> uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the folks that the kids that was able to take the ski train. It ran from 1940 till 2009. Then it ran out of money, and we weren't able to run it any longer. Um, in in two, 20, 2015, it was the 75th anniversary of the ski train. They ran it for one day. It sold out in moments, and we're lucky to say that next year, actually this coming winter, 2016, the ski train will run again, and we'll be servicing direct service from downtown to the mountains to the west that we love to Winter Park. Very excited about that. But remember all those viaducts I was talking about. So I had to go back a little bit further. This is an image from 1973. Every single yellow line on the map was a viaduct coming into or out of downtown Denver. 
Again, these were systems that were built to carry trucks and vehicles. This had nothing to do with moving people. I have to go back for a minute on that one because it's just too long. Um, shoot. Okay, the blue line in there. If you've been to Denver lately, you know where Denver Union Station is. It is fantastic. There's pictures of that coming up. REI, just to give you guys some context, the blue line in there is Cherry Creek. Uh, we've got uh, a great bike path that goes along there. Somewhere in there it connects to the South Platte River over by REI. I honestly couldn't find it on the map, so I couldn't highlight it for you. But this is what Denver looked like circa 1973. We were creating, just the, the south end of the picture, we were creating the Auraria campus, uh, very intentionally creating a commuter-like campus so where people would come and leave every single day surrounded by big busy streets that were, didn't have anything to do with human beings. Right now what we're talking about and working with the Auraria campus leaders and the downtown Denver partnership leaders is how do we actually fix those streets? How do we undo what we did in the past and create them so that they work for human beings? Again, just to give some context of what it looked like in Denver. These are the rail tracks that were behind Denver Union Station and this was the inside of Denver Union Station. Beautiful building, beautiful place, but absolutely no people. And just miles and miles of, of uh, railroad tracks that took up areas where there was uh, no life, it was quiet, it was hidden. Again, 2007, 2007, this is Denver Union Station. We still had not yet actually made the progress that you're gonna see just shortly or if you've been to Denver lately. In 2007, just as the recession was beginning to hit, we were still working on the financing and the governance structure to actually build Denver Union Station and bring the fast tracks, the regional transportation district fast tracks um, efforts into town. This is a much more recent picture of Denver. You can see that we've really started to grow up. We're moving, uh, we're, not, we're not the cow town we once were. The railroad tracks are gone. You can see in the center there where it's all empty. That's just behind Denver Union Station. The last parcel of, of development potential has just gone underway. Um, so you will know when you get down there, there's no place left to build in downtown Denver. We continue to move forward. We've consolidated the railroad tracks into one place. It's called the Consolidated Main Line. You can see that we've got residential, office, mixed use, all coming into our downtown and really changing the entire look and feel of downtown. Very different than what it looked like before with regards to uh, all the viaducts that were once coming in. And that were really quite scary places to be. Uh, this is where Governor Hickenlooper started the, started the Wincoop Brewing Company at one point. At that point when the viaducts were going on, there were maybe four or five places that were open past 459. Uh, there was not a whole lot going on in that area. When I was in high school, we would go down and uh, take over with Vespas and ride around the streets in downtown and it didn't matter because there was nobody there. It's a very different story today. This is Denver Union Station that we've just reopened. It truly is the crown jewel of Denver. There are the rail, lo rail lines coming into and out, the bus depot, and people are there every single day. And one of, that's probably one of our biggest challenges right now is that everyone wants to be in front of Union Station. We actually had someone say recently that they wanted to, Denver Union Station to operate like Denver International Airport. And I said, well, the context might be just a little bit different in terms of Denver International Airport. This is the inside of the station right now. People are coming from all over the place. It's a beautiful station. There's a hotel there, the Crawford Hotel, which uh, was contributed to Dana Crawford, who helped save many of the buildings uh, throughout Lodo. Brighton Boulevard. This is our direct connection from I-70 into downtown. It's the fastest way into downtown. The pictures on the left is what it used to look like. I went there as a kid. My dad owned a small grocery store. It was the warehouse district, and so we would go down there and get the groceries. This is what it's gonna look like on the, uh, on the right. I'm gonna go back just for a second there. Uh, we're just are getting ready to actually go into construction on a complete reconstruction, which it obviously needed since there weren't even like curbs and gutter, much less a sidewalk or a place to ride a bicycle. Um, we're just getting ready to go into reconstruction of this roadway. It'll be built over the next 12 to 15 months, so we're very excited about that. Uh, when I first moved back to, 90, to, back to Denver in 97, I had been gone for a few years. Someone asked me, if you were going to invest in Denver, where would you invest? I said Brighton Boulevard and Five Points, which is a nearby neighborhood into downtown. If only I'd had 50 cents to my name, I could have bought something and hit the, the gold rush that we're experiencing right now. So what are the things that we've been doing in Denver? We've been doing road diets before they were cool. We've been building bike lanes and facilities thanks to the, the goodness and the thoughtful design of everything that we've been doing here at NACTO in terms of um, 
the protected bike facilities. This is a, one of our latest ones with the little rhino there. That's actually in the rhino district. We hadn't quite finished that um, uh, bike lane design, but that's something that really has a big meaning to the community overall. Not does it only, it was a one-way to two-way conversion and we put in bike facilities, uh, but we also said, you wanna have a little bit of fun in this rhino district, so we put a rhino on a bike. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner, or I think it's left, yeah, right-hand corner for you guys, uh, is Broadway. So if you've been to Denver, you know that Broadway is one of Denver's main streets corridors. We did a pop-up protected bike lane last year. It was very successful. We're moving forward with the study right now. And uh, I, what we probably shouldn't tell the public is while we're doing the study for 15 months, we also have the money to design it. So we do intend to keep going. These are some of the neighborhood commercial districts that are embedded throughout the entire city and county of Denver. Just as those pictures that I showed at the very beginning with the viaduct system were empty and boarded up, many of our embedded commercial neighborhood districts were also empty and boarded up. They were all a result and created because of the, the vast streetcar network that Denver had at one point in time, which just as many other cities was pulled up along the way. Big year for RTD and for the city and county of Denver, opening up fast track system. We have five lanes opening up, five lines opening up this year, including our line that opened up in April to Denver International Airport. So not only are we connecting our region and our city, but we're also connecting back out to the world so that everyone can come and experience Denver and all the things that we're doing and make it easy. But we have so much more left to do. How do we move more people? How do we do a better job of doing it? Just as Scott spoke about Seattle, we are growing very quickly. We have to do things differently than we've ever done before. The bottom is a map of Colfax, where today we move 20,000 people a day on transit, but the demand is much higher than that. With the bus rapid transit that we're proposing, we believe we can move upwards of 40,000 to 50,000 people a day. So thinking differently about the space. At the same time, we recognize that the, the health and well-being of the city and county of Denver that we've experienced over the last 10 years, it's not ubiquitous. We have a whole sector of people that are struggling, that are not getting by. They don't have the ability to move forward, uh, to move around easily in our city. So we are working through the Smart City Grant that we applied for through USDOT and Columbus got, congratulations Columbus, very well done. But it's not stopping us. Uh, Mayor Hancock has mil uh, several million dollars in proposed in our 2017 budget so we can keep saying, how do we continue a better job, not only from a design perspective, but also from a technology perspective? How do we make sure that we're listening to our customers, to our citizens that are there, and making sure that the, per the way that we're going to address these situations will actually help them? So we're looking at uh, a pilot program in terms of a first and last mile potential program to sort of say, how do we get folks in lower income neighborhoods into good paying jobs in our Cherry Creek area? How do we get our high school students in particular who don't have yellow bus service, um, make the My Denver card that we have today and actually create that and, and have it be a transit pass for them? How do we move forward with our Go Denver app that we can actually continue to make it more useful and partner with the private sector in, uh, folks like Panasonic and Easy Mile, uh, where we're building a smart TOD out at the Pena Station, which is on the way to the airport, um, and do some piloting of autonomous vehicles, but bring the types of improvements that folks want to see. This is Denver, and this is Colorado. We have great cities, we have a great city, we have great restaurants, we have great urban neighborhoods, but we also have a place outside of that that has a lot to offer in terms of skiing and recreation, and we need to actually be able to get there too. If you've driven to ski in I-70, I know uh, uh, there's a, a little bit of a difference between Salt Lake and Park City that was pointed out last year. I don't know if Robin's here, but anyhow. Um, there is a challenge there, and if, if people are wanting to move to Denver, and more and more people are moving here to Denver, we have almost 700,000 people in our city, and it's moving very quickly and growing very fast. If we cannot solve the issue of how we get people to other places, then we will have a challenge. This is Denver right now and Denver in the future. We have a huge opportunity in terms of where we are right now, and we look forward to being thoughtful and imaginative, just as you all are here, it's the imagination that we need to be con continue to thinking about to create better cities as we move forward. Thank you.